The act of applying finish to a guitar is called finishing, and we are going to finish this guitar. However, when we are done, there will still be plenty to do. Let's meet the cast of characters. The guitar with the fretboard taped off and also the truss rod cover area. I've exposed about a millimetre of fretboard so that when we're done, I'll be able to sand down a smooth wedge transition between the oiled fretboard and the French polished neck. We have the bridge, the truss rod cover, and the pick guard, each with a block attached with double sided sticky tape. And we have the access port cover with a screw protruding from the inside. As you may recall from when we French polished the soundboard, the first steps are flood fill and rapid build before we move on to actual French polishing. For as long as the wood is thirsty, we keep it coming. And eventually the wood says, hey, I've had enough. The work starts to get a little bit grippy. And we need to start slowing it down and using just a little bit of oil. Once we get the guitar in this orientation, we're up to the level boss of the run. This interior corner is going to be the hard one to get right. Now at the moment we can just flood shellac into it and let it soak it up. But once we have to start working it, we want to make I want to make a really sharp edge and point on my rubber so that I can do clean lines like that that end up applying an even amount of shellac all the way in. A little bit of history repeating itself. I'm going to call a pause on this while I do a little bit of extra sanding on the headstock. There's a scratch there that could pass as a grain feature, and there's one there that can't. So I think I'll see if I can take that down just a little bit, and then we'll resume the French polishing. looking nice. Well, all of the pieces are no longer drinking up the shellac and I'm getting a little bit of grippiness occurring from time to time and hear that sound? It's not going on perfectly smooth. So, time to Put a little bit of oil on the rubber. Transition to French polishing. Just been chasing another couple of scratches that turned up. 
that one didn't need fixing. This one, I'm pretty sure it's just a grain feature, but looks like a bit of a gash or a wound, but no, I think it's just natural. Now I've got to blend all that back in. weather is not as warm as it was when we were French polishing the soundboard so this will be more sessions shorter sessions What I am about to show you will horrify any experienced French polisher and it's the sort of advice that can only be given by a beginner like me. A heat gun or hair dryer can be used for one purpose and one purpose only. On a cool day, it can allow you to work a little bit longer. It does not fix problems, though it can create them. And it should never be closer to the work than you'd be happy putting it on your face. Critically, it does not harden soft shellac. If anything, it can actually melt solid shellac and that is catastrophic. What it does do is convince the work and the rubber that the day is a little bit warmer than it actually is so that the polishing session can last a little bit longer with fewer rests in between. One point of interest is this area right here, the heel cutaway transition. We've got three different species of timber in two different grain orientations. Right now, you cannot feel any of those joints. But in a month or so, I will be able to. The solution for that, which we are not going to be doing on this build, is to seal that area, wait a couple of months, then sand it again before finishing. Otherwise we just have to live with it. It's still beautiful. Now that we're getting a good shine on some of these little bits and bobs, I'm just knocking down some of the high spots, tempering any kind of grain texture, we're not going to go for a, you know, a sheer mirror finish, but I want it to look a little bit nicer. On the guitar itself, it's also progressing along nicely. I'm not going to be doing major leveling on that. I think a natural look uh, is going to suit the instrument very well. Once again, this is 1200 sandpaper with a little bit of the mineral oil. And because it was only 1200 
and because I was only partially levelling, it resulted in a mottled matte finish and it requires very, very little work with the rubber to bring it back to a shine again. It comes back better than before. Before we get stuck into a fresh new day's French polishing, remember the crack in the back. I realise now I should have worked some tight bond into the crack as well as the stepped fixer blocks, which you won't be able to see. Uh, but my idea was to drizzle some CA glue into the crack later on, so let's try that now and see what it does. The reason is that I can just see the crack uh, if I look carefully on the back. So I've taped it up. Let's give it a go. Well that's gone a few places where I didn't really want it to go so let's hope that it also goes to the places where I do. As I work around the guitar, I give these bits more of a go than the surfaces of the guitar and they're pretty much where I need them to be. Build-wise, maybe the door could use a bit more. In particular the bridge, I'm going to stop polishing that very very soon, uh, give it a bit of uh, burnishing and spiriting off because I want it to be nice and hard when we need to glue it on to the guitar because masking tape will lift off incompletely cured shellac and our clamping process is also going to be more likely to mark it. No glue seems to have come through so, but I think we can just polish over that it's strong, it's not going to move again, and nobody's going to notice unless they look really, really carefully. Change of plan, and this could be very, very dangerous. There were one or two places where just a, a tiny little splinter had lifted off the edge of that crack. Using a sharpened kebab stick, I'm putting minuscule lines of shellac along that area. This could go very wrong. It's the sort of thing that has gone wrong in the past. Because a drop of shellac doesn't just sit there, it kind of lifts off the shellac in the surrounding area due to surface tension or something. And you can get uneven colouring. I'll let that harden and then we'll sand it and continue polishing. While waiting for this shellac to harden, I've been working on the two contoured glue lines of the neck, uh, the scarf joint and the heel stack joint. The scarf joint is pretty good, I can't see any contours when I look at the shine in the reflection of the lights. This one is not quite so good. It was inadequately sanded. Um, so I'm just working on that so that you won't be able to feel it and hopefully you won't be able to see it when looking at the gloss under lights. Talcum powder has a legitimate use in French polishing. I'm not using it in that legitimate way. I'm using it to fill the 
hairline crack where a splinter lifted up uh, where the two pieces joined. It looks an abominable mess and any self-respecting French polisher would be horrified but it is the sort of mess that we can now fix using more traditional French polishing methods. <laughs> Starting to look good again, except one little scratch divot that I made while sanding. Kind of hoping that I'll be able to fix that using this sanctioned method of actual French polishing. Putting little drops of shellac tend to lock one into a never-ending cycle of repairs. Let me tell you what might have happened. I might have tried to take a shortcut and disregarded some of my own strict advice and ended up making things very bad. And I might have had to do a whole bunch of extra steps to fix them up that I was too ashamed to record. If that had happened, all of the extra polishing might have made the back look fabulous. So all in all, I'm very, very happy with how it's turned out, but not how we got there. On now to the burnishing stage, which looks like the other stuff. So we'll go through it fairly quickly in the video. One of the almost disappointments of French polishing is after a few sessions of successful work when the piece is looking pristine, we come back the next day and it's looking not quite so good. Now the first reason is that over time shellac shrinks in and around the fibres of the wood and as we didn't do any grain filling that will reveal some texture. Now the solution to that is either to build up a thicker layer or to fill the grain. The second reason is that the finish, as we apply it and build it, has a small amount of oil kind of dissolved in the matrix of the resin, and that will rise to the surface and dull the finish a little bit. The solution to that is spiriting off, where I use a separate rubber that I only charge with alcohol and just a little bit of ultra dilute shellac, and we go over the work pretty much taking off the surface layer and just smoothing over what remains. We have to be careful because we're removing oil so we can't put any more on so we don't get it to the stage where it gets grabby. You know, we just use a little bit of friction and just kind of skim off the oily layer at the top. Apart from that, it all looks the same as everything else you've seen today. But I do not have to show it off because it's just like footage that you've seen before. In my experience, if the previous French polishing sessions have been a little bit problematic, the spiriting off phase is where the magic happens and one's work is shown in the best possible light all of a sudden. If, on the other hand, we've been doing rather well in previous sessions, then it's more like a little bit of icing on the cake, and it's not so dramatic. I think it's fair to say that we've seen both occur today. You'll be delighted to know that I've actually paid attention to my notes for this next little segment. I'm going to be using some auto-cutting compound, really fine grade, uh, to just bring out some of the shine on the finish. But if we do it, and it's completely optional, we must wait a few days for the shellac to be rock hard, otherwise the grains of abrasive will uh, end up being embedded in the finish, which will make it uh, not very nice indeed. But I have waited a few days. Whoops. Almost forgot the bits and bobs. Uh, 
At the end of all that, squeaky clean and nice and shiny. The final step to really bring it home is a little bit of wipe on, wipe off furniture polish. I keep finding more steps. It is time to unmask the fretboard. What we have on either side of the fretboard is a little bit of edge where the shellac met the masking tape and there's a little bit of bump there as well. For that reason I purposely masked a little bit up exposing some of the fretboard. So the shellac edge is actually on the fretboard itself. So I can just run along it with a small piece of 400, sanding that down into a kind of a bevel that blends the shellac into the bare wood of the fretboard. I'm being careful not to sand any of the shellac that's actually on the neck itself. It doesn't look the best at this time. I'm just concentrating on how it feels. If the sandpaper isn't quite doing it, I can use the blade of a sharp knife as a scraper, but being very, very careful of the angle. And to get the feeling just right, I might actually use some 1200 sandpaper and stray about a millimetre across the edge of the join onto the neck itself. Until I'm happy with the feel. And if I need any lubrication, I will use lemon oil because that's what we are about to flood the fretboard with. Speaking of which... I'll really flood this in and I'll put on more than one application that I won't bother showing. It's going to make the fretboard look really nice and strengthen it and protect it. It doesn't matter if it gets on the finish. I think we'll leave it there. Everything is looking absolutely beautiful and fabulous, though not perfect. Join me next time when we will attempt to bring this ship into shore. Cheers.